Hi everyone, it's Stephanie here and welcome back. In today's video, we are going to be creating two cards that feature the new Tweet Holiday stamp set. And I've already stamped out and colored my images just because it did take a little bit of time to do the coloring and I wanna focus on the backgrounds and the actual assembly of the cards today. So I stamped out all of the images from the stamp set minus the branches, I didn't use those. And I stamped them all with extreme black ink onto some white cardstock and I colored them all in with Copic markers. And these are the Copic markers that I used for the coral colored birds and the holly that's included in those as well as the birdhouse. And then for the second set of birds, I used all of these colors once again, but I also brought in a kind of a really pretty minty green color and that's the colors I used for the bases of the birds' bodies. So I did add in three additional green colors for this set of birds and I will show you those here. So they are the G00, G02, and G16. This is a new green color combination for me and I really enjoyed it and I love how the birds turned out. So I definitely think I'll be using that one a lot more. So for the coloring, I kept it very basic. I just did a little bit of shading, just to add a little bit of dimension to the birds. But other than that, I did some just basic coloring. And I also cut out two pieces here from the Snowdrifts Cover Up Dynamics. And this is what we're going to layer on top of our scene once we have the background piece created. And we're gonna tuck all of these little birds kind of throughout this whole entire background. So my idea for this card was I wanted to create two different backgrounds and I wanted to create coordinating birds to go on each so that the cards kind of match but had a different color scheme on each card. So on the first one I'm going to use worn lipstick and abandoned coral to kind of match the coral colored birds and then I'm going to use cracked pistachio and lucky clover on the other set. And then I'm just going to kind of switch them and use the coral birds on the green background and the green birds on the coral background. So I'm just going to use the coordinating dies first and cut out all of the bird images and then I'll bring those back and assemble the cards once I have the backgrounds finished. So for the backgrounds I'm going to be using Distress Ink on a piece of white cardstock and I'm going to start off with my lighter color first so in this case that's going to be the worn lipstick and I'm going to fully cover my background piece with the worn lipstick. Once I have that base color on there, I'm gonna go in with the darker color, which is the abandoned coral, and I'm just gonna go around the outside edges. I wanna have kind of a darker area on the outside and then it to lighten up in the middle of the panel. And these panels are already cut slightly smaller than that snowdrift cover-up die that we're going to layer on top, so I know that they're gonna perfectly fit in behind there. So you can see now I have the abandoned coral one all finished and this fits nicely over top, but we're gonna do a little bit more to this once we have the green background finished as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that exact same process with my greens. I'm using the cracked pistachio first, which is a very light mint color, and this color really matches those birds that I colored with the Copic markers. And then I'm gonna go in with that lucky clover, and I'm gonna repeat the process by adding that to the outside edge and then leaving the middle of the panel a little bit lighter. And you can see I'm kind of holding a piece of paper there to hold my panel. That just helps prevent me from getting fingerprints in the ink or getting the ink on my fingers and then transferring it to the rest of my project. So once I have this background finished, I'm going to take both of my finished backgrounds and I'm going to add a little bit of water and white paint to them to create a snowy background. I did this recently in another video and I've actually been doing it to a lot of my cards this season and I'm absolutely loving this way to add snow. It just really gives you a really opaque white look and it's a very random splattery look so I just love the overall effect. So the first thing I like to do is first take my water and I like to put water onto the panels. Since we did use Distress Ink, it's going to react with the water and create kind of a splotchy look in the background. I like to do this first just to get some really light layers of kind of that splotchy snow look before we go in with our paint. So I just take a paper towel and I dab that off. You don't wanna rub it around cause you'll just kind of move the ink and the water together. You just wanna dab it off and lift it straight off and you'll end up with this really cool distressed pattern on the background. And then once I have that done, we're really going to bring these backgrounds to life and really make them look like a winter wonderland by using some white acrylic paint mixed with water just to kind of thin it down a bit. And then I'm going to take my paintbrush and just flick it off the side of my acrylic block. There's lots of different ways that you can do this. You can tap your paintbrush directly over top of the panel. I know some people like to use a toothbrush. I like this method just because I feel like I have a little bit of control over where it's going, even though it is a random pattern. And it helps me to kind of keep the mess contained right over top of the panels. And now you can see I end up with that really great snowy effect. I think it looks so neat and I really think it adds to a scene once it's completely dry. Okay, so I did set these aside to dry. It doesn't take very long for the paint and the water to completely dry on these panels, but you do wanna make sure they are completely set before you start to assemble the card. 
So the first thing I want to do now is I want to take these cover up pieces here and I want to adhere them to the background. And I find the easiest way to do that is just use a liquid glue pen and add adhesive all the way around the back of this little piece here. I like to completely cover the outside edges and then put a little bit kind of throughout the center pieces. You don't want to fully adhere the center strips down though because you are going to be tucking some of the birds down in behind those. So we want to be able to actually get the birds under there and if you have them fully adhered they're not going to be able to do that. And as I mentioned when I started here, I did cut the panels down so I knew that they would already fit in behind here. I didn't want any of the panel peeking out from the outside edges. So just make sure to measure whatever you're layering on top of and make sure the bottom piece is going to fit nicely underneath there. So now I have both of the top pieces on, we are going to assemble the cards. And I'm going to keep these the exact same. I'm not going to change up the design at all. So I'm going to figure out the first one here and then I'm just gonna do the exact same thing for the second one. But I am going to, like I mentioned, use the coral birds on the green background and then vice versa for the second card. I also stamped a little sentiment there, tweet greetings from the same stamp set. And I use the horizontal hearts in a row dynamics to cut out that little sentiment strip. If you use that one, you can actually get the greeting for both of the cards out of one die cut piece since it is long enough. So I have it stamped a second time and we'll use that on the second card. For all of the little individual pieces, I am adhering everything completely flat to the card. I'm not using any foam adhesive on this design at all, but absolutely feel free to if you want to add a little bit of dimension to some of the pieces or all of them. So what I'm doing is I'm using liquid glue as well as my tape runner adhesive, just depending on how big the area is to add the glue onto. And I'm just adding all of these different pieces onto my background. So I'm just kind of figuring out where everything's going to fit. I do want to use all of the images. I really think it's kind of a cute design to have all of these different birds together, like a big bird family. And I wanted to make sure to include all of them on this design. And you'll notice as I add some of the parts here, I'm kind of cutting and trimming where I need to. These little guys here, I didn't want their feet to kind of be sticking out down in behind that little white piece that we're layering them under. So I just kind of snipped the little tips of their toes off there so that I wouldn't have any of the overhang underneath. And then I'm just gonna continue on adding the different pieces. For this little bottom guy, I didn't put his feet underneath of the panel. I decided to have him standing on top of it since he's right at the bottom. And then for my sentiment, I just kind of adhered that underneath of that bird first, and then I positioned him on there and let that kind of hang out from behind him. And then the last thing we're going to add is this other piece of holly here, and we're just gonna add it to the bottom right corner of the card. And then that is going to complete our design, and we've pretty much filled the entire background with all of our images. And I love the kind of decorative look of that snowdrift dynamics underneath of them to kind of add to the scene. For this card here, I'm layering it onto a poppy card base, which is a really pretty red color that almost looks like the same coral color that we did on the bird, so it matches perfectly to our images. And then for the second card, you'll see what I do for that one because I don't have a cardstock color that's going to match that minty green color. So we're just gonna improvise and we will create something that does match as well. So now I'm just gonna repeat the same process. I'm just going to take all of these green birds now and I'm going to assemble this card as well. And I'm just gonna speed through this because it's the exact same process. I'm just using the same two adhesives and all of the same pieces and I'm adding everything on here. That panel, I couldn't figure out why my birdhouse wasn't lining up and then I realized that the panel was upside down. So once I realized that, I went ahead and started to add everything. And then once again, I'm just doing a little bit of trimming anywhere I need to to make everything fit nicely. And I'm just going to follow the exact same design as the first one. So once I finish getting all of these guys adhered on here, I do need to add this one to a card base as well. And like I mentioned before, I didn't have a card base that perfectly matched this green color of the birds. So what I decided to do is just take a panel of white cardstock, and I'm just gonna color around the outside edge with the Copic markers that I used to color in the birds. Now you can do this two ways. You can do it this way with the Copic markers, or you can also do it with the distress inks that we used on the first card to create the green background. Now when I colored this, I first used the medium green color that I had used on the birds, but I decided it was a little bit too light. So I ended up going over top of it with the darkest color, which is the G16. And now when I layer my panel on here, it's going to perfectly match those bird images. And then all we need to do with this one is add adhesive to the back of the panel, and then we could adhere it directly to our card base. Both of these cards are A2 size cards, which are four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And once I have this on here, we have completed both of them, and they have the very same design, but they have a different color combination. I really love the variation of the two sets. And if you wanted to, you can make a bunch of these and make a card set since everything would match really nicely. Now the last thing I'm gonna to do to finish off these cards is I'm going to add some confetti sequins to both of the cards. So I use the Pretty Pink Posh Marshmallow ones. You can kind of see them there added into the background. They don't stand out a whole lot, but they add a little bit of dimension and just really add to that snow look in the background. 
And then the last thing I'm doing is taking my white gel pen and adding a little bit of white gel pen detail to all of the bird's bellies. And I'm also adding some highlight detail to some of the scarves, to the holly berries, and just kind of anywhere else where I feel like I wanna have a little bit more detail than just the simple coloring. And then once we've added those, we have finished our cards and we have this great card set that perfectly matches together. We just changed up some of the colors to make them look a little bit different. I love this color combination, the mint green with the coral colors. I think it's so pretty and it's just a fun and unexpected color combo for the holidays. It still incorporates the traditional green and red but kind of changes up the hues of both of those colors. You can find all of the supplies that I used in today's video in the description box down below. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope to see you in another video soon.